Sex dominates advertising and art and is arguably the biggest factor in the initial rapid growth of the internet. In addition to internet dating sites like eHarmony and Match.com, porn is hugely popular. Some estimates suggest that about half of all internet usage is dedicated to searching for, viewing, and downloading porn. According to Daily Infographic, 12% of websites and 35% of all internet downloads are pornographic. Clearly, sex is a major motivator of human behavior. It's extremely pleasurable and is essential to our survival. So naturally, religion wants to control it. Whether we're talking about abstinence, abortion, contraception, homosexuality, masturbation, menstruation, or anything at all sex-related, you can guarantee religions have something retarded to say about it. In Islam, it's believed that martyrs will be rewarded with 72 virgins in the afterlife. But it seems this 72 virgin thing just wasn't very well thought out. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, ladies, but from what I've heard, the first time for females is most often uncomfortable, if not downright painful. Now, this might be okay for sadistic martyrs, but what about the virgins? And does the hymen grow back afterward, or does the martyr only get 72 shots, and then he's stuck with six dozen non-virgins for the rest of eternity? According to the Bible, women are unclean during menstruation. Leviticus 15.20 even goes as far as to say anything on which she lies or sits during her menstruation will be unclean. In Orthodox Jewish culture, a nida is a woman on her period, and according to Jewish law, husband and wife have to be separated during the woman's menstruation. Now, anyone with half a brain knows that this aversion to a woman's monthly cycle is bloody ridiculous. According to the Hadith, there is nothing which God abhors more than adultery. In the Islamic Republic of Iran, sex outside of marriage is prohibited by law. But Islam offers an excellent loophole. Siga is the tradition of temporary marriage, lasting anywhere from 5 minutes to 99 years. And often, it isn't even registered with the government or the church. The only requirement is a permit for the period of the relationship and often a <coughs> dowry payment to the woman. That's right, folks. Islam has sanctified prostitution. The Bible never explicitly mentions masturbation. The scripture most often referred to on the subject is Genesis 38 verses 9 and 10. But this story about Onan spilling his seed was not about jerking off, but rather his refusal to knock up his sister-in-law. But that doesn't stop religionists from condemning it as sinful. Because after all, in Matthew 5.28, Jesus is supposed to have said, But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. According to Jesse Crowley of The Porn Effect, a Catholic advice website, masturbation breeds self-absorption, greed, sexual gluttony, and is often a result of sloth. Well, it's also been said that masturbation will make you go blind. But as an empiricist, I can assure you, I personally debunked that hypothesis when I was 12. Gay bashing seems to be the favorite pastime of Catholic, Evangelical, and Islamic bigots. Despite the fact that homosexuality is pervasive in most, if not all, mammalian species, they claim it's unnatural. They justify their vitriol towards gays with Leviticus 18.22 and Leviticus 20.13, while hypocritically ignoring Leviticus 29, which states, any of you that curse your father or mother shall be put to death. According to Bill Donahue, the obnoxious, loud-mouthed, anti-gay bigot and president of the Catholic League, the crisis in the Catholic Church is not pedophile priests, but rather homosexual priests, because many of the victims were post-pubescent, that is, 12 to 13 years of age. He said this on Larry King. Seriously, Google it. You just can't make this shit up. 
We could talk all day about the anti-gay insanity and other anti-sex attitudes rampant in religion, but I want to get to the good stuff, so let's close this section with one final example of religious goofiness. In the Islamic tradition, August is Ramadan, the Islamic fasting period that is supposed to teach the virtues of faith, humility, and spirituality. Muslims must abstain from sex from dawn until sunset for the entire month. But sex immediately after sundown is okay, as if God can't see in the dark. As a Muslim friend once told me, you don't have to be Nostradamus to predict what everyone does as soon as the sun sets. Here's some fun statistics. According to Daily Infographic, Sunday is the most popular day of the week for viewing porn. And Utah, home of the Mormon Church, has the nation's highest internet porn subscription rates. A recent Pornhub poll of viewing habits in the U.S. shows Mississippi, home of the American Family Association, Real Christian Foundation, and Global Outreach International, leads the nation in gay porn viewing. And per a study entitled Adult Social Bonds and Use of Internet Pornography, self-identified fundamentalists are 91% more likely to look at porn than non-churchgoers. But enough about religious hypocrisy and idiocy. It's time for the truth about sex. Science has demonstrated that sex provides us a multitude of measurable mental and physical benefits while abstinence has been shown to be downright harmful. Studies such as one conducted by Queen's University in Belfast, published in 1997 in the British Medical Journal, indicate that abstinence can cause psychological and physiological problems such as anxiety and depression and increased risk of heart disease, cancer, incontinence, migraines, high blood pressure, susceptibility to cold and flu viruses, and a host of other problems. Here's just a few of the benefits of sexual activity. While having sex, a woman's body doubles the estrogen level, protecting her heart, making her hair shine and her skin softer, and in the long term can also be efficient against Alzheimer's disease and osteoporosis. And for men, the increase of testosterone helps strengthen the bones and muscles. Sweating while having vigorous sex can cleanse the skin pores, decreasing the risk of dermatitis. Studies have indicated that men who had orgasms more frequently had half the death rate of those who had less frequent orgasms. Sex burns calories and can help with weight loss and fitness. 20-minute weekly quickies can consume as many calories annually as 750 miles of jogging. And it's a lot more exciting than running on a treadmill. Sex is beneficial for the heart and blood circulation, especially in the brain due to the increased heart rate and deep breathing. Sexual activity lowers the risk of getting colds and flu. One to two intercourses weekly means 30% higher levels of the antibody immunoglobulin A that spurs the immune system. Sex makes you more attractive through the increased release of pheromones. Having sex causes the brain to release endorphins, which decrease stress and with it the likelihood of stress-related illness. Following an orgasm, a rise of the hormone prolactin makes the brain stem cells form new neurons in the olfactory bulb, boosting a person's sense of smell. Sex leads to better control of the bladder by strengthening the pelvis muscles, controlling the flow of urine. Having sex regularly drops the cholesterol level, balancing the ratio of good and bad cholesterol. Good sex can increase sleep quality. Following an orgasm, the bodies of both males and females become completely relaxed, promoting a good deep sleep. Research has revealed that men who ejaculate more than 21 times a month presented a 33% decreased risk of developing prostate cancer than the baseline group who only ejaculated between 4 and 7 times monthly for most of their adult life. Immediately before orgasm, levels of the hormone oxytocin rise by 5 times, determining a huge release of endorphins, which can calm pain from a minor headache to arthritis, with no deleterious secondary effects. And even migraines can be abated, because the pressure in the brain's blood vessels is lower while we have sex. So, rather than saying, Not now, honey, I have a headache. You might consider saying, Right now, honey, I have a headache. Now, being responsible about sex 
is imperative. One should be physically and mentally ready before they engage and be educated on the consequences and be safe. But if you get your info on sex from primitive desert nomads and repressed clerical virgins, error, 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 error.